We're at number eight, and for me, it's another rap album. And this one is Blue in Exile, and it's called Miles from an interlude called Life. I got introduced to Blue and Oh No, I think it was last year, with a long, wet, hot Los Angeles summer night, which was really cool because they had this very much more storytelling in rap. The way I, I always kind of parse it is like some of Eminem's work where he does more storytelling, like one shot, two shot, which I really enjoy as a, an, an idea. This one takes that idea and brings it full circle for a whole entire one crazy night with a lot of different rap artists. This one is a little bit more just one-on-one -on -one songs. It does span a little bit over an hour. I believe it's closer to an hour and a half, but there's no one song on here that I absolutely hate. It's just really solid throughout. And a lot of this is a lot of jazz rap sound. I understand that that pushes away some people, but for me, I just really enjoy a lot of the work from Exile, and I love a lot of the flows from Blue. There are some parts where you feel the length of it, but throughout, Honestly, it's one of the more solid rap albums that I've heard all year, and because of that, I can't deny it in its spot in the top ten. Very nice. So you got a lot of rap this year. It's not yeah. something I technically the, associate you with. No, but there is going to be one on here that I think that you... Because you're not necessarily a rap person. I have my select artists that I like. So I'm curious, because there's going to be one in my top five that I think that you will really enjoy if I... If, but we'll get to that when we get there. Okay. My number eight is an album that I thought would have been higher up earlier in the year. The more I've listened to it, I still love it, but it definitely has dropped a few rankings in my list, and uh, he's probably going to be surprised by this. My number eight is Cold Orange with Underneath. See, I'm not super surprised because that has done the same for me. It will be in this list, but it has dropped a little bit. What do we say about Cold Orange? These guys have exploded onto the scene. I mean, there are so many reaction channels to their music stuff. There's so many people reviewing this album. I mean, everything that has been said by other people is probably going to be repeated by me, but... Um, and definitely by me. <laughs> what a shift from 2017's Forever. They infuse so many different genres on this album. Some hip-hop sounds, a lot of industrial metal, a lot of hardcore. You got songs like Swallowing the Rabbit Hole, and they have this absolute stop in the middle of a song for like a split second, and then just hits you with this really heavy guttural just scream and you're just like holy crap you got songs like the finisher underneath which is a song i never thought i'd hear cold orange attempt the guitarist i can't remember her name now but she's utilized way more on this album with her clean singing and it adds kind of a gritty texture to the album that i think was missing on forever i like this one better than forever because it just does more there's more variation you got songs like Sulfur Surrounding, which are really great. Some of the deep cuts like The Last One's Left and Autumn and Carbine, which are really awesome tracks. I am very curious to see where this band is going to go after a record like this. There's the possibilities for this band have opened up, and I don't think we're going to hear an album like this again because I think they're just going to keep evolving their sound and keep throwing us for different type of loops every single time they have a release. So it's always going to be a fresh experience when they're going to drop an album. So I'm gonna hold off my responses to that and just because it's gonna be a little bit higher on my list. But one thing that I wanna to touch on and I'm curious if what you think about it. You and you alone. Yes. I, I think that one on uh, as well as a couple other ones, their their drumming on there is also stand out and you and you alone stands out the most to me because it reminds me a little bit of Gojira. In terms of its drumming. Yeah, Marco is definitely a better drummer, but there are passages on this record that do have a, a slight Gojira vibe. I feel like they more have an influence of Nine Inch Nails on this record, which I feel it in a lot of their tracks, a lot of their passages, and a lot of that ambient noise and that noise that you don't get from like your guitar and your drum, stuff like that. So mm -hmm. they definitely pulled a lot from industrial on this album, I feel like. Yes, I definitely have some thoughts, but we'll save that for a minute. So number seven for me is an album that I've been telling you about. I don't know if you ever checked it out, but it's become a, a, a super riser, in my opinion. And it is Asylum by Chaos Bay. Now, this album, I'm glad that I found this out. Like I've mentioned in other videos, check out sonicperspective.com. They do a lot of end of year stuff with like rock and metal and heavy metal and prog that like you get to see a full spectrum of what is out there. And I'm glad that I checked this out because this isn't necessarily a huge band, but I am very happy to see where they're going. This album, honestly, I heard it and I immediately wanted to listen to it again. 
and there aren't many this year that have done that for me. The idea of this album, Asylum, is basically what the title is. It's talking about a lot of the immigrant population that's going into certain countries and how they are being basically treated less than human, taking it from their perspective and seeing like how they would feel throughout this. There's a lot of lines in there that are just really good, like the chorus of Amen, which is, there's a God, why is this happening? But there's also a, a really good passage in there. It's like basically paraphrasing, but it's like, I met a man who entered the country so he could find a place to, uh, where he could sleep without a pistol in his hand, like he would use to protect his family. But then he always gets stares and he's asking, what has he done? There's just a lot of really good songs. Soldiers, which is a little bit more mainstream metal, but it's a beautiful song. It builds so well. And it's talking about literally you have to leave someone behind because they might be dead weight. What is also super cool about this album is it just flows very well. Uh, I always love an album that like where the song ends and immediately flows into the next part. And the first five songs, it does all of that. Actually, six songs. The only issue is the last three songs aren't as interesting, but overall, a phenomenal debut album from Chaos Bay, and I'm really curious to see where they go from there. Oh, what kind of music are they? So they are more on the prog side. I had a hunch. I will say they are a little bit... I don't even know if pop prog is a, is a term, <laughs> but but in, what I mean by that, it, it has a little bit more mainstream ideas at times. Like Soldiers is a ballad that you could definitely hear on like a hard rock radio, but you also hear like Olympus Inn, which has like choruses of like, yes, I know, yes, I know. Like it has a little bit more mainstream vocal ideas, Okay. but overall just like it hits so hard and the, the lyrical nature on there is just really good. I'll have to check it out. My number seven, it's another metalcore album. And like I said, the theme of this top 10 for me is uh, metalcore. It is uh, Fracture by Belief From Within. And these guys are a Scottish uh, metalcore band. As you can see, a lot of the uh, top 10 are coming from like this UK metalcore scene, which is really exploding. I actually happened to hear one of their tr singles just on Spotify. I just kind of threw it on my playlist. And I was like, oh, okay, that's kind of cool. I like that. So I checked this record out. And man, this album is heavy. It is punchy, really awesome guttural vocals, really awesome soaring guitar passages. They have a very As I Lay Dying feel to them, like okay. like later As I Lay Dying from like an Ocean Between Us that album, and like some of their newer stuff. Like it's more As I Lay Dying, but it just feels a little fresher. Songs like Pathfinder into Nothing, really anthemic. You got songs like Ascend and Utopia, which have these really awesome ripping guitar passages. Really solid drum work, really solid lyrical content, just an all-around really, really solid album, and something that I found myself coming back to over and over again. Mm -hmm. And again, like this, like I said, the UK metalcore scene is really kind of knocking out of the park lately. As you're going to see in, in my top 10, again, there's going to be at least another one or two bands from the UK in this metalcore scene that are going to make the list. Hey, Ar what, Architects is putting out something very soon as they well? They are putting out an album this year, which I am super yeah. excited for, and I think it's coming out in two weeks. They already hey. have four singles out. The Not newest one, yep. we'll, we'll leave my opinions on the newest set single for later not for nothing i am super excited like once to get this done because there, i haven't listened to anything from 2021 yet and there are a few albums i've been meaning to listen to transatlantic so in so in stephen wilson though i've heard mixed opinions about so that one's gonna be a, a a potential top 10 of the year already i mean their last album was a, very close for me a top 10 i'm uh, curious to see how that goes 